Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. On The Flash Season 8, today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 8. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So this episode was actually really good, because this is our first non-interlude episode. This actually leads into the new villain who is currently a mystery. However, we get a tease of who he's going after, and specifically the person's powers, or whatever they may turn out to be. So I definitely really enjoyed the episode, and I especially love the mystery aspect to it yeah i do have some nitpicks and i'll get to the nitpicks but that's more in regards to one specific storyline and we'll get to that when we get to it but right away let's begin at the start of the episode so the opening we see from a weird perspective after a bunch of shots around the bar and it's just you know one of the bartenders and he's closing up and then he is attacked and we don't see the attacker, however you get to see this kind of distorted vision from the attacker's perspective and it seems like the guy is given frostbite or there is some sort of thermal attack that is being hit on this guy. And so it was curious at first because I really did think it was like chill Blaine or maybe Frost. But then when they kept the person a mystery, I was like, okay, for sure it's not them because why would they do that? They would just show us them if it was them attacking, if they wanted some money from this guy or if this guy owed them. So it turns out it's someone completely different. And so the guy falls off screen and we cut to later a crime scene investigation. Barry and Chester show up with some of the cops. And so they're investigating it and his body has been completely burnt to a crisp and it completely ignores the law of physics in terms of how fire is supposed to work and how scorching is supposed to work because I think Chester and Barry actually note that beneath the body there is no scorch marks, it's just the body itself. So somehow this person died and turned into a crisp pretty much in an instant by this person, we don't know who this specific person is, and this attack does happen later in the episode, and we'll get to that again when we get to that. However, let's go over Barry and Iris' scene, so they have like a kind of back together again scene, where we finally see the two of them reunite, although we have seen them in a couple of scenes together, but beyond that, really it's been very separated as of right now, because last week was a very contained episode with Barry in the CCPD with other characters and so it's just nice to have them back together. Talking of Iris, we have Iris and the CC Citizen Media and basically this plays a big part in the episode, it's the other storyline that is ongoing and basically Iris wants Allegra to cover this social media influencer who has like 500k followers or something. She's called Rosie and Allegra is adamantly against this because it's not an interesting story, it's not what Iris set up the CC system media for. And I definitely think Allegra is right and I was rooting with Allegra this whole episode, which is actually nice to see because I don't feel like Allegra has been the best character and we haven't always been led to be on her side kind of and yeah she still calls Iris boss and it's a little bit weird because they're supposed to be like really good friends so you would call them Iris. But apart from that, we have this new reporter who's been brought into the mix, who is a complete asshole. And so you get to see Allegra's good side because you're seeing this bad side of this other reporter. And basically Iris assigns this other reporter to the social media influencer. And we know, and we've seen glimpses of this reporter, and we know that she's basically the epitome of CW and overprivileged whiteness, basically. I mean, I can't really find any words to describe the reporter because she is a complete archetype and she is someone that is so common when you're in America. And it's a fact, and I know that's not everyone, it's like one in 1,000 people are like that, but the way that she acted in this episode, it seemed like she was just a complete asshole, and I really don't care for her at all, and especially the way that she talks to Allegra, like it's very rude. And so I'll talk more about that later and their kind of dynamic, because there is this last scene in the episode that I really, really need to talk about. But for now, let's move on. So we have the hotness who returns, aka Jayco, or however you pronounce his name. It's nice to have him back. I like the actor from Glee. However, 
you know, his one episode he showed up in, I don't think he had that much time to shine and much to work with. And again, in this episode, he has a lot more to work with. Although when he gets angry, he obviously becomes more like that character we've seen in the past. But it's much more emotional for him because it's all about his son. And this kicks off right at the start of the episode when we first get reintroduced to him. He's a security guard in the arena for this band and he's all excited. And it turns out he had like an argument last night. And it seems the CCPD are completely sure and adamant that he killed the bartender at the bar because he had an argument previously the night before and he was the last person to speak to that person who wasn't the other bartender and the bartender identified him and so at that point he's arrested and he says I swear I didn't do anything I swear and so before this Barry has already shown up and Barry helped CCPD actually arrest him but Barry knows in his heart as soon as he sees the look in his eyes that he is innocent and Barry must do everything in order to prove this and that is what he does this episode and I love that Barry sticks to this because it ties into Barry's dad's birthday and obviously the day is a sad day for Barry but it also means a lot to him and there is a lot to look back at and so seeing someone like this being arrested and potentially them actually being innocent it just gave him lots of flashbacks to that night that Barry's dad was arrested for his mum's murder when obviously he was innocent. And so after this, after the arrest, Barry goes to Cecile because he is really, really certain that something is off and that maybe someone else could have committed it. And he's really, really adamant that Jacko is in fact innocent. And so the news reporter once again comes back and they go off and they go to Jitters and Allegra is assigned to go with her and supervise her during this interview with the social media influencer. And at that point, with Allegra being completely bored, she goes over to someone that she recognized, and this person that she recognized is Lydia, someone that Allegra went to prison with, or was in prison with, and so Allegra does a mini interview with her on the spot, and she wants to do a profile on her because she thinks her story could be something that a lot of people who read the publication could learn a lot from her story and get new insights into people coming out of prison because someone like Lydia has quite evidently changed but because of her past record as she states she isn't able to do much more than the basic jobs that she is offered and so Allegra realizes her luckiness and basically she knows she has to tell this story and the other reporter is quite evidently annoyed and she does like many rolling eye kind of faces to prove this point. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. We have the hotness, aka Jayco, and he is remorseful for his past and this is inside CCPD's holding cell and the fact that there's no witnesses, Cecile is very adamant that in a court this wouldn't actually hold up like there is not enough evidence to prove that he is innocent because so much points to it being him I mean the pattern of it being kind of scorch based or fire based attack that is the number one thing and then the number two thing is the fact that he was at the bar the night before and he was one of the last people to talk to the bartender that got killed so it all links up and so he makes it very very clear all he wants is to get his son back and to have a normal life however he kind of breaks this promise by breaking out of the prison whilst he was on like a convoy to go somewhere else i'm not sure where he was supposed to go but he somehow got his powers back even though he probably had like a meta dampening cuff on however so he escapes and he's out in the middle of the blue he goes after the other bartender and so Barry has a real mystery on his hands and so the Flash and Frost go to the place where Jaco confronts the other bartender who was the sole witness and he gets extremely mad and we get a couple of shots where it looks very similar to what we saw before so I wonder what actually happened between him actually being there and the bartender being killed because I think Jacob would have told Barry and everyone else if he witnessed someone else using similar powers to his to kill the bartender so obviously he split from that scene and then after that someone else went and killed the bartender 
and it just so happened that he is being framed for this. And like I said before, Flash and Frost turn up to the crime scene, and obviously before it's a crime scene, and basically they find the dead body of the bartender, and Team Flash still, right after this, doesn't believe Barry's instincts, and it's obviously on a special day for Barry, which is bringing back all of these memories in regards to his past, and his relationship to his dad, and you know, the night that he actually got arrested, and so it's funny in the scene, Barry actually said pissed off, I just thought that was like a fun moment, because he never kind of swears at all, like, I don't even know if they're allowed to say anything more than crap, so it was kind of funny to hear someone say pissed off. But then one of the members of Team Flash goes on to say, you're asking us to believe in the impossible, and there is obviously some very clear parallels, yes, it might be a bit heavy-handed with its parallels, but I appreciate the parallels. However, by saying literally the line that's been said in the past and the fact that they don't react to it is a bit weird because they know what happened and they know that Barry had to believe in the impossible. And that's the whole premise of the show, or at least that was the premise at the start of the show. Remember when Barry used to do the intros to every episode when Grant used to say it? It's like, my name is Barry Allen, and I am The Flash. I want you to believe in the impossible. Obviously, that's just me paraphrasing, but that was part of the message of the intro of literally every episode. And so I kind of hope that they go back to that stance once again. And so after this scene at Star Labs, Barry goes over to his lab. He's looking at the board. He's got like a pin board. And then Joe walks in the room. He's like, I haven't seen a board like this in a long time. And... Joe is here and he comforts Barry, basically saying that he knows what February the 1st means to Barry because it's Henry's birthday and, you know, the rest of Team Flash, like Frost and Chester and Cecile, don't necessarily know what it means to Barry. And that is specifically something that Joe has to talk about because Joe was so connected to Henry in the past and to what Barry has been through because Joe was the one that, in the end, raised Barry whilst Henry was falsely in prison. So I thought this was a really touching moment and the fact that Joe believed in Barry when no one else believed in him, thought that was absolutely great and completely in character for Joe. And so Barry talks about the look in Birch's eyes and the fact that this was the same look that Barry's dad looked back at him on the night that he was arrested. And so he knows that something is off and that he can see what other people can't, that's what Joe says, in fact, that Barry can see stuff, because Barry has gone through such extraordinary circumstances, he has a unique perspective, and so Joe pretty much encourages Barry not to give up on his gut feeling. This actually promptly leads into the first discovery that makes it pretty clear that the hotness isn't in fact guilty. This is as Chester calls Barry on the comms and he's like come to Star Labs where he found out that the heat signature was off and that it was some sort of cold fusion that actually caused what happened the deaths of the two bartenders and the fact there was some sort of nuclear reaction from this person who is killing all of these people and obviously this is a meta we don't know who specifically it is but the hotness is cleared but he nearly messes it up as he goes after his son and basically he is being escorted by one of the cops that we've been seeing in the last couple of episodes and also his social worker and this isn't a good look for him because he's there in the middle of the street demanding that his son be released. Obviously that makes him and paints him as a criminal. But in fact, Barry comes to the rescue because Barry says to Jaco and the cop that he's found evidence that will prove that Jaco actually didn't commit the crimes. And so he realizes at this point he's done something wrong and you know, this kind of forceful situation is bad and he shouldn't do stuff like this in the future. Everything is fine for a second after this. However, suddenly there is like a bunch of earthquakes and the ground starts shaking and then magma quickly shoots up into the sky. One of the surrounding cars goes flying and we're left like, what is going on? And that's the same for all the characters. Like what the hell is going on? But Barry figures it out because he realizes that it's his emotions and the fact that there is some sort of magma, lava, underneath them there is a volcano that is maybe being activated by him that is causing these magma bursts 
And so this is an isolated incident. This hasn't actually happened before. Although some of the earthquakes that happened before maybe was because of that. But this volcano I don't think is the size of Central City. But it's like way down beneath. But because he's becoming so powerful and he's kind of leveled up a bit like Barry. That's why he is triggering the magma. And he actually gets a hero moment and basically everything between him and his son is all better. And he proves to the cops that he is in fact not a bad person. And especially because he's been exonerated and he did a good act by saving thousands of people around the area. Things are looking up for Jaco and he shortly after gets freed which is great and it's very emotional and he reunites with his son Harold and Barry and Cecile thanked by him and so he heads off into the sunset. I don't know if we're going to see him again but this episode I think redeemed him for that past episode because this episode was very emotional and I actually really liked him in this episode. I thought he was pretty good. Even... You know, some of the scenes where he kind of burst out into this kind of crazed shouting. But during the magma scene, actually Frost is doing nothing. It was kind of weird and I really do feel like she's a bit clueless right now and she's acting all different. I don't know if that's just me, but that is something that I observed in this episode and I think it's all since Mark was introduced. Now she is much more quirky, she is less threatening. Obviously before she used to be Killer Frost, now she's just Frost. And she's not much of a hero. Yes, yeah, she's occasionally helping, you know, with the body. She was trying to extinguish it a little bit. But here, she pretty much did nothing. And she just, you know, said a joke or two. Like, that's pretty much it. And I didn't really see the point of her being there. I guess it was just to fill the screen with more characters, but I'm not sure how I feel about the way that Frost is progressing this season. And so as the hotness goes free, we get the parallels between Barry and Henry getting out of prison and Barry reuniting for the first time. So it was very touching and very nostalgic for me as a fan, and I'm sure it was for you guys. But after this, after Jacob is free, you're left thinking, who is the real killer? And so I shortly afterwards realized, oh, this is going to be a big thing. Like, we're going to continue with this. And I believe this is going to be the next villain who is this meta serial killer for the next graphic novel, which began with this episode. So I love that we're delving into this mystery. And in the ending scene, Barry actually reveals that he believes it's a serial killer. So it's someone that has killed before and... They're going to look for signatures similar to this in terms of crimes that have been committed, but also how to maybe track something like this. And so this is going to be an ongoing thing for like the next four or five episodes. I don't know how long it's going to specifically be, but I like that they're going with this murder mystery and the fact that we have no idea who this is, apart from the fact that they are able to basically burn victims by using cold and your mind definitely goes to someone like captain cold but this isn't captain cold but this is more thermal this is more of a kind of nuclear reaction that causes someone to literally burn up in an instant and it looks and has the signatures of fire but it isn't exactly what would happen if someone combusted by being set on fire by say a fire meta like the hotness and so just before this we had a really sweet West Allen family moment as they're sitting outside of what looks like Joe's porch and they're just having a beer and they're just hanging out and it's just nice to have this I feel we don't have just a kind of casual hangout with the family that often yeah we sometimes hang out with the team but not specifically with the family so I really like that they're kind of getting into that a little bit and so they talk about Henry and what they remember and obviously Barry is quite nostalgic and he remembers like one of the books that his dad used to read him something to do with the hippo and obviously you remember Nora's book was the dinosaur so I think it's a nice kind of contrast there but the final thing I want to talk about was my main nitpick in this episode and I mentioned it earlier and so this final scene with Allegra and with the new reporter who accuses Allegra of having bad ethic, which is complete irony because she is the one being an asshole to Allegra. And then she goes on to say that Allegra learned it all in prison. I was like, whoa, that is like one or two or three steps too far. And then she goes on to say, I'm going to destroy you and then promptly walks off. And I'm like, oh my God. Can we please 
just not do this story because this is the usual CW drama shit and I really really don't care for it like it's so petty that she is going after Allegra like I feel so bad for Allegra obviously we're supposed to feel this way but it's just terrible that she has to go through this and the fact that she's been so petty and calling out Allegra for being in prison and maybe that's why she acts this way and she's not even acting that unethical yeah you know she didn't go with the plan but at the end of the day she got a good article out of it so you know she's being a good journalist but yeah she could be a better supervisor but why do you have to be such an asshole to your supervisor why would Allegra want to help you anymore and why are you going to destroy her just because she did one thing that you didn't agree with like I think you're just a bad person so that's just my personal opinion about this character and the fact that I really don't care for this type of drama on the CW and I thought we were kind of done with this so it's a little bit of a shame to go back to the I will destroy you kind of drama because I feel like we have no need for this so it's very very petty but what do you guys think about that let me know in the comments down below are you annoyed by that as well but apart from that I really enjoyed this episode and it set up the villain in a really good way I thought everything else was really, really good and actually quite emotional. So if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Also subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. And just as a reminder guys, if you want to support me, I am making a new film. I'm going to be directing it. The link is in the description below. There is many perks if you want to support and donate towards the film, towards me. You guys can come on the set as an extra and act for like a day in London. Obviously that only applies if you can get to London. And there's also perks where you can just be featured in the credits as a thanked person. And you can also become an associate or executive producer based on how much you support towards the film. So once again, thank you guys for your support. And if you want to support extra, go over to the fundraising page in the description below. It's on Indiegogo. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.